Hi, we're going to be looking at chemical reactions and combustion. The problem statement we have is a diesel engine uses dodecane, C12H26, for fuel. The fuel and air enters the engine at 25 degrees C. The products of combustion leave at 600 degrees C, and 200% theoretical air is used. The heat loss from the engine is determined to be 232,000 kilojoules per kilomole of fuel. They want us to determine the work from the engine uh, for a fuel rate per kilomole hour. We're now going to look at our stoichiometric equation. We're told we're burning a fuel that's C12H26 plus some X amount of air, so O2 plus 3.76N2. This becomes some alpha amount of water plus some beta amount of carbon dioxide plus X times 3.76 nitrogen. If we look at our reactant side and our product side, we know we're going to need 12 carbon atoms. So we can say beta is equal to 12. And we know that for our hydrogen balance, we have alpha is equal to 26 divided by 2. And this is equal to 13. We also know that from our products, oh, sorry, our reactants, X times 2 is going to be equal to alpha plus beta times 2. If we isolate for X, we get that X is equal to alpha plus beta times 2 divided by 2. And this is equal to 13 plus 12 times 2 divided by 2. This gives us 18.5. So our balanced stoichiometric equation is C12H26 plus 18.5 O2 plus 3.76 N2 gives us 13 H2O plus 12 CO2 plus 69.5. 56 and 2. We're told that this combustion occurs with 200% excess air. So we have our equation C12H26 plus 2 times as much air, so 37 times O2 plus 3.76 and 2. This is going to give us 13H2O plus 12 CO2 plus 18.5 O2 plus 139.12 N2. The temperature of our reactants is 25 degrees C. This is equal to 298 Kelvin. And the temperature of our products is 600 Kelvin. And we have some, you know, workout heat coming out, things like that. So if we write out our energy balance for this chemical reaction, we get that the sum for our reactants times the number of moles of that specific reactants times its enthalpy of formation plus the enthalpy of the temperature of, that, of our reactants minus the enthalpy of our reference temperature, which happens to be 298, is going to be equal to our workout plus our Q out plus the sum for all our products, the number of moles of that product, specific product, times the enthalpy of formation for that product, plus the enthalpy at that, the product's temperature, minus the enthalpy of our reference temperature, which is 298 Kelvin, gives us our energy balance for our chemical equation. If we put all those different uh, values into a little table, we'll have for C12H26, O2, N2, H2O, and CO2. We'll have our enthalpy of formation, our enthalpy at our reference temperature of 298 Kelvin and our enthalpy at 600 Kelvin. 
And we'll also put our number of moles for our reactants and number of moles for our product. So for C12H26, we find that this is minus 290,971 kilojoules per kilomole. Because our air entering is at 25 degrees C, we see that these cancel out, so we don't need it. We don't have any of these in our products. For our reactants, we have one mole, and we don't have any in our products. For CO2, it does not have an enthalpy of formation. This is found in our tables. Uh, for our reference uh, temperature, we have 8,682 kilojoules per kilomole. At 600 Kelvin, we have 17,929. In our reactants, we have 37 moles of this. In our products, we have 18.5. For N2, there's no enthalpy of formation. We find that this is 8,669. Uh, at 600 Kelvin, this is 17,563. And we have 139.12 in both products and reactants. H2O, the enthalpy of formation, we're going to look at for gas. We have minus 241,820. At our reference temperature of 25C, we have 9,904. At 600 Kelvin, we have 20,000. 402. We have none in our reactants, and in our products we have 13. For carbon dioxide, this is minus 393,520. This is 9,364, 22,280. None in our reactants. 12 in our products. So if we look for all of our reactants, the sum of the number of moles of that specific reactant times its enthalpy of formation plus the reference temperature or the temperature of the reactants minus the reference temperature of 298, we can see that our reference temperature is the same, so this will cancel out for all of our reactants. We find that this is equal to minus uh, 290,971, and we said this was kilojoules per kilomole. And if we do the same thing for our products, number of moles of that specific product times the enthalpy of formation plus the uh, enthalpy at our temperature for our products minus the enthalpy at the reference temperature of 298 Kelvin. We find that this is minus uh, 6,171,256 kilojoules per kilomole. Using the equation for the energy balance we had earlier, we can rearrange for work out. We can say that work out is equal to the sum for all our reactants, the number of moles of that specific reactant, the enthalpy of formation, plus the enthalpy for the temperature of our reactants minus the enthalpy of our reference temperature, minus the sum for all of our products, the number of moles of that specific product, the enthalpy of formation, plus the enthalpy for the temperature of our products minus the enthalpy of a reference temperature, minus Q out. We were told that Q out is equal to 232,000 kilojoules per kilomole. So we get that our workout is equal to negative 290,971 plus 
six million one hundred and seventy one thousand two hundred and fifty six minus two hundred and thirty two thousand. This gives us a work out of five million six hundred and forty eight thousand two hundred and eighty four kilojoules per kilomole of fuel. And we're told that we had a fuel input of one kilomole hour, and they want us to give us our work out. So we get that our work out is equal to 5,648,284 divided by 60 times 60 to give us our kilojoules per second. And we get 1,000, sorry, 1,568.9 kilowatts.